Hello. Good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Dr. Ifi's Hematology and Blood Transfusion Science Lecture Series. Thank you very much for your support and encouragement. Please remember to drop your comments, like our videos, and subscribe if you have not done so. Your feedback and questions will help us a lot to improve on what we are doing. For some time now, we've been discussing iron metabolism. We've looked at iron absorption. We've looked at regulation of iron homeostasis. And today, we are going to be looking at another important topic, iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia. Please permit me to share my slides with you. Thank you very much. Okay. Like I said, we are going to be looking at iron deficiency anemia. Remember, my name is Dr. Ife Dr. Ife Mary Ann Okafo, a lecturer in the Department of Hematology and Blood Transfusion Science. College of Medical Sciences, University of Calabar, Nigeria. It is expected that at the end of this lecture, you should be able to define anemia, define nutritional anemia, and iron deficiency anemia. You should know the causes of iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia. You should have a good understanding of the sequence of events that lead to the development of iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia in our system. We should be able to explain tissue effects of iron deficiency and understand the uh, steps that are involved in diagnosis of iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia. And of course, management of iron deficiency anemia. What is anemia? Anemia can simply be defined as a reduction of red blood cells Anemia can simply be defined as the reduction of red blood cell volume or hemoglobin concentration below reference level for the age and sex of an individual. The reduction in volume of red blood cell or hemoglobin concentration below the reference level for the age and sex of a particular individual. WHO defines anemia in children under five years and pregnant women as a hemoglobin concentration less than 11 gram, gram per diem at sea level. And in non-pregnant women as a hemoglobin concentration less than 12 gram per diem. Why in men, WHO defines anemia as hemoglobin less than 13 gram per diem. Pathophysiology of anemia. What is it that can cause a decrease or reduction in the volume of a red blood cell or concentration of hemoglobin? A decrease in the numbers of red blood cells can be traced to any of these three things that I've listed here. One, when there is impaired production of red cells, Example, what we have in aplastic anemia and nutritional anemias. When there is impaired production of red cells, the number of red cells we have in the peripheral blood can reduce. Secondly, when there is increased destruction of red blood cells in the peripheral blood, as we have in hemolytic anemia, example, sickle cell anemia, it can also affect the total number of red cells in the circulation. And it can also affect the concentration of hemoglobin. Another one is when there is massive or chronic blood loss. When there is massive or chronic blood loss, this can also lead to a reduction in the volume of red blood cell or concentration of hemoglobin that can 
it will define as anemia. Now let us look at nutritional anemia. Nutritional anemia is defined as anemia which occurs when there is a deficiency of one or more of essential nutrients required for the synthesis of hemoglobin and of course production of erythrocytes. When you have, remember we said anemia can be caused, one of the things that can cause anemia is impaired production of red blood cells. So nutritional anemia is a form of anemia that can develop as a result of impaired production of red blood cells because of inadequacy of nutrients that are needed to produce these red blood cells. And example of those nutrients that we will be looking at are iron, folate, vitamin B12, pyridoxine, that is vitamin C, vitamin C, copper, proteins, and possibly vitamin E. All these things are necessary for red cell production. And when they are deficient, the individual develops one form of nutritional anemia or the other. You have iron deficiency anemia, megaloblastic anemia, all these things are anemia that can occur due to deficiency of one form of nutrient or the other. And today, we are going to be looking at iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia. Now, let us define iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia. You remember when we are treating iron metabolism, I emphasized that the body needs iron a lot. Therefore, the body cannot afford to do without iron for long. So the body has a way of conserving iron. And one of the ways that the body conserves iron is apart from the iron we take in from our diet, we have proteins in our body that stores iron. These proteins like ferritin and hemosiderin stores iron in case if we don't get enough of our diet, they, the body can still be you know, producing red cells from this stored iron. We also have another way that our body conserves iron by recycling old age red blood cells that have been catabolized. The iron content of those red cells are recycled and, you, uh, uh, and reused. So in defining, so the body can be iron deficient without having the anemia aspect of it. So let us look at the definition of iron deficiency. Iron deficiency is a decrease in the amount of body iron resulting from a sustained increase in iron requirement over iron supply. Iron deficiency is a decrease in the amount of body iron resulting from a sustained increase in iron requirement over iron supply. Why iron deficiency anemia is a condition in which the body lacks enough red blood cell or hemoglobin to transport oxygen rich blood to tissues due to the inadequacy of iron supply. And iron deficiency anemia is a condition in which the body lacks enough red blood cells or hemoglobin to transport oxygen rich blood to body tissues due to inadequacy, inadequacy of iron supply. Iron deficiency anemia is a situation where the body is not able to produce enough red cells that can adequately transport iron, that, that can, can adequately transport oxygen throughout the, the body because of a lack of iron in the system. There are causes of iron deficiency anemia. Causes of iron deficiency anemia. We have one, diet. Remember one of the ways the three ways we can get iron is one, from our diet, two, from stored iron in the system, three, from recycled air, red cells, iron content of red cells in our body. So iron deficiency anemia can be caused, we can develop iron deficiency anemia when we don't eat iron-rich food. When the, our diet does not contain iron or our diets are, the diet that we take in are actually poor in iron. 
Remember that we said that there are two types of iron that we have in our diet, heme iron and non-heme iron. The heme iron in form of hemoglobin and myoglobin, most times we get from meat, fish, poultry sources like egg yolk, chicken. Why non-heme iron we get from cereals, vegetables, grains, and heme iron can, is easily absorbable. The non-heme iron, non-heme iron, a smaller part of it is what we absorb from diet because there are a lot of things that can reduce its absorption because for it to be absorbed, it must be reduced from iron three to iron two. So when we eat things that uh, affects, you know, its absorption, we hardly absorb this iron from our diet. So when we take in food that are not rich in iron, we can develop iron deficiency. In it. Like vegetarians, people that the vegans, people that eat only vegetables, they don't eat meat. And you know that most of the him, uh, mo mo most of the iron is gotten from the him iron in that we have in the meat, fish and poultry sources. So this uh, set of individuals are prone to developing iron deficiency anemia simply because of the type of diet that they eat. Therefore, diet is a key uh, element to developing iron deficiency anemia, eating diet that are poor in iron. Another thing that can cause iron deficiency anemia is increased physiological iron requirement. Increased physiological iron requirement. This is common in infants, adolescents, menstruating female, and in pregnancy, when the demands for growth may be greater than the dietary supplies. You know. In infancy, they have a very high metabolic rate. And also, adolescents, they're menstruating women that lose some amount of iron monthly during their uh, cycle. And also in pregnancy, pregnant women, because of them, they have the, the pregnant women, the fetus acquires about 200 milligrams of iron, and then further about 400 to 500 milligrams is required for temporary expansion of maternal red blood cell during pregnancy. And another 200 milligrams of iron is lost when the, with the placenta and also with the uh, bleeding during delivery. Because of that, as pregnant women need enormous amounts of iron to meet up with their daily requirement. So when the, the demand for growth, the demand for the need they have for iron is greater than the dietary supplies, they can develop them. Uh, iron deficiency anemia. So increased physiological iron requirement can lead to iron deficiency anemia when the demand is greater than the supply. Again, another thing that can cause iron deficiency anemia is in is blood loss, blood loss. It can be acute blood loss. It can be chronic eh, blood loss. And losing about as little as six to eight mil of blood, that is about 303 to four milligram of iron daily, is actually significant. It's actually significant. And the loss, this loss, blood loss can occur from genital tract in women or from gastrointestinal tract in either sex. It can be as a result of infestation with, you know, hook worm, take worm, whipworm. Studies have shown that infestation with hookworm, tapeworm, whipworm can actually lead to development of iron deficiency anemia. But the degree of anemia depends on the, the intensity of the infection. Then menorrhagia, you know, increased uh, menstru frequent menstruation, increased uh, menorrhagia can also cause uh, iron deficiency anemia. Hemorrhoids, peptic ulceration can also cause iron deficiency anemia as well as gastric bleeding. Bleeding of any, 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 any type can actually lead to sustained bleeding of any type can actually lead to iron deficiency. And then because the person, we, as we are losing blood, we are losing uh, iron. And it can it's also be shown, it has been shown that cows make intolerance in infant may lead to gastrointestinal hemorrhage. It's that cow's milk intolerance in infants may lead to gastrointestinal hemorrhage, which, if not stopped, can lead to iron deficiency anemia in infants. 
self-induced hemorrhage may also you know, occur as a result of um, Munchausen syndrome in individuals, and this can also lead to iron deficiency anemia. Then we have diseases like uh, chronic intravascular hemolysis, such as pyrozyma nocturnia hemoglobinuria, and you know, mechanical hemolytic anemias. All these things can also lead to sustained loss of iron through urine or iron loss. So any form of bleeding, whether it is acute or chronic, can lead to iron deficiency anemia. Another thing that can cause iron deficiency anemia is malabsorption. Remember, iron is absorbed at proximal duodenum. And anything that can interfere with the absorption of iron at that level can cause iron deficiency anemia. This, can, this may be a primary cause of iron deficiency anemia. Or, as, as that, example, in, you know, dietary iron is poorly absorbed in glutin-induced enteropathy in both children and adults. People that have um, gluten-induced uh, enteropathy, dietary iron is poorly absorbed. It can, malabsorption can also be, you know, it may prevent the body from adjusting an iron deficiency from other causes. It may prevent the body from adjusting to iron deficiency from other causes. So malabsorption can also inability of an individual to absorb iron from diet, either due to diseases that has to you know, affect small intestine or duodenal part of intestine, or for any reason, any reason that can prevent an individual from absorbing iron from diet that can actually lead to iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common form of anemia, and it, it develops over time if the body does not have enough iron to manufacture red blood cells. It develops over time. Without enough iron, the body uses up all the iron it has stored in the liver as ferritin, the bone marrow microphages, as ferritin and hemosiderin and other parts of the body, the body will just use up all body iron stores. And approximately 30% of global population suffers from iron deficiency anemia. And most cases are seen in developing countries. Most cases are seen in developing countries. Maybe because of poverty, because poverty is a key factor there. Because when you don't have enough resources to provide enough meal for yourself and for your family, you may not be able to eat iron-rich food. And that can also lead to iron deficiency anemia. Like I said, iron deficiency anemia can, is not an acute thing. It develops over time. This is because the body has iron stores. So even if you're not taking in enough iron in your diet, the body will be making use of the ones that it has stored over time, and then also continue to make use of the one from recycled uh, uh, red cells. It is when the body have used up all the iron stores, and also because as the body using up all the iron, iron stores, you have what we call deficient erythropoiesis, iron deficient erythropoiesis. So the, the red cell that eventually produce is no longer rich in iron. So even when it is recycled, the individual might not get enough iron to keep on using. So you now have, start having frank iron deficiency anemia. So an individual can be iron deficient when you have used up all the uh, 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 iron stores without having iron deficiency anemia. Let us look at the sequence of events that leads to development of iron deficiency anemia. The first one, the first event is one, there, there is depletion of iron stores depletion of iron stores. When the body is in a state of negative iron balance, the first event is depletion of iron stores, which are mobilized by hemoglobin production, which are mobilized by hemoglobin production. Iron absorption is increased when stores are reduced before anemia develops. And at this stage of depletion of iron stores, the serum iron is still very normal. But when you do 
foreign, sudden foreign estimation, you will know that the sudden foreign has decreased because the body have started using of is called iron. So the first event that occurs before the development of iron the deficiency and is what depletion of uh, iron stores. And at this stage, you still have your iron parameters being normal, except serum ferritin. The serum ferritin will not be normal at this stage because the body is making use of stored there uh, iron. The next thing that will happen is iron deficient erythropoiesis. Iron deficient erythropoiesis. With further iron depletion, when the serum ferritin is below 15 microgram per liter, the sudden transferrin saturation falls to less than 15% due to a rise in transferrin concentration and they fall in serum iron. After the depletion of iron stores, the next thing that will happen when the body has exhausted its iron stores and the serum ferritin falls below 15 microgram per liter, the body starts producing what we call green iron deficient erythropoiesis. Start having what called iron deficient erythropoiesis. And at this level, at this level, the, the serum ferritin is already below the normal range. And then the transferring saturation with iron is reduced. And transferring concentration also increases. The transferring saturation with iron reduced. This leads to the development of iron deficient erythropoiesis. The development of iron deficient erythropoiesis and increasing concentration of serum transferring receptor and red cell protoporphyrin. Remember that serum transferring receptor, like we said in our previous lecture, is those receptors in front of the cells that need iron, that collect iron from transferring and internalize them. Now, during iron uh, deficient erythropoiesis, this, the, the cells are, are deprived of iron. So the, the natural thing for them to do is to produce more receptor, to be able to get as much trans, transferring bound iron as possible within the cell. So during transferring with uh, uh, iron deficient erythropoiesis, soluble transferring receptor or serum transferring receptor is increased. And then rest cell protoporphyrin, remember that uh, protoporphyrin is produced as a uh, part of him. And it's only when iron is incorporated into protoporphyrin that him is formed. In iron deficient erythropoiesis, the body is, it keeps making protoporphyrin ring, but there is no iron to incorporate into the protoporphyrin ring because the body is deficient in iron. So at this stage, the proto cell protoporphyrin ring, when estimated, is increased. At this level of iron deficient erythropoiesis, the hemoglobin, the mean cell corpuscular volume, the mean cell corpuscular hemoglobin may still be within normal range. When you estimate these other parameters, hemoglobin, mean cell corpuscular volume, that's MCV, MCH, MCHC, they may still be within uh, normal range. Even the serum ion may still be a little bit within the normal range. At this um, iron deficient erythropoiesis stage, but the serum ferritin has reduced below normal. Now, the, 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 the third and the last stage in development of iron deficiency anemia is iron def the, uh, development of frank iron deficiency anemia proper. At this stage, every attribute of iron deficiency anemia, characteristics of iron deficiency anemia is seen if the negative balance continues, if the negative iron balance continues, frank iron deficiency anemia develops. The cells become obviously microcytic. The red cells become obviously microcytic and hypochromic. And the pyrocytosis become more marked. You see a lot of pyrocytes, you see a lot of microcytes and then hypochromic red cells. The main cell volume the mean cell hemoglobin is actually, the mean cell volume is reduced, the mean cell hemoglobin is reduced. And then you can also have target cell present in the field, film. You look at the blood film, peripheral blood film, you see target cells. Then the serum uh, TIBC, the serum uh, transferring 
iron binding capacity rises. Sterum ion falls so that the percentage saturation of the transferrin also reduces, falls before below 10%. The percentage saturation of transferring with iron reduces, falls down before. The, so at this stage of frank iron deficiency anemia, the body is totally in a negative iron balance. And when you look at the red cells in the peripheral blood, you look at it microscopically, you will see that red cells are microstatic, the red cells are hypochromic, the red cells are also polyclosized in the red cells, and then the mean cell volume is very low, the mean cell hemoglobin is very low, the total iron binding capacity is high, is increased, then transferring saturation with iron is uh, reduced below 10%. Obviously, ferritin is low, near to zero, and then transferring, soluble transferring uh, receptor is increased. Protoporphyrin ring uh, estimation is increased. Now, at this stage too, the bone marrow macrophages show a total absence of iron. At this stage, the bone marrow macrophages show a total absence of iron. So, for the estimation, when you do it, it actually, you know, approximately to near to zero or nothing. And then platelets that is increased in platelet, that is increased in platelet. So, three stages that are involved that leads to Development of iron deficiency anemia is number one, you have depletion of iron stores. Number two, you have iron deficient erythropoiesis. And number three, you now have the development of frank iron deficiency eh, anemia. And you should be able to know at this stage what actually happens. At the level of depletion of iron, def um, iron stores, everything looks normal except the eh, ferritin. Ferritin becomes abnormal at that stage. At the level of uh, iron deficient erythropoiesis, ferritin is gradually abnormal below 15 microgram per liter. Transpersonal saturation with iron is reduced. DIBC is increased, but you can still have MCV, MCH appearing normal at that level. Transpersonal receptor uh, is, is also increased. But at the level of development of iron deficiency anemia proper, everything becomes gradually abnormal. The, um, uh, Bone marrow macrophages lacks iron, ferritin lacks iron, that is hepatocytes, ferritin is hepatocyte, lacks iron, and then MCV, MCH is low, below normal, serum iron is reduced, the cells become hypochromic, microcytic, you have polyclocytes everywhere, you have target cells everywhere. That shows you that hemoglobin is obviously reduced. Iron deficiency, anemia, develops. Now, this is a slide showing what peripheral blood of an individual with iron deficiency anemia looks like. These are red cells that are obviously very microcytic in nature. If you look at them, they are microcytic and they are hypochromic. And just, or you see target cells everywhere and you see a lot of them, um, Because of this feature of uh, red cells that are associated with iron deficiency anemia, Iron deficiency anemia can also be said to be an example of microcytic hypochromic eh, anemia. So morphologically, we can classify iron deficiency anemia as microcytic hypochromic eh, anemia. But mind you, iron deficiency anemia is not the only thing that can give microcytic hypochromic picture. But if you are looking at blood picture and you have uh, cells that are grossly hypochromic, and microcytic. Uh, micro the first thing that, you, that will come to your mind is iron deficiency anemia. You need to rule that out before you start considering other causes of uh, microcytosis like thalassemia and other things. Then iron deficiency anemia morphologically can be said to be what? Microcytic uh, hypochromic anemia as shown on the slide. Looking at it, the red cells are very hypochromic and also microcytic, and you have target cells everywhere. You have target cells and they're also polyclosized. Okay. Now, as the body, 
iron stores depletes. As the body, iron salt depletes. There are changes that occur in many tissues. In many tissues, hemosiderin and ferritin virtually disappear from marrow and other storage sites. As the body is depleted of iron, hemosiderin and ferritin virtually disappear from hepatocytes, microphages, and all the places that uh, uh, ferritin can be found. And another thing that happens is that there is a decrease in the activity of many iron containing proteins, such as the cytochrome C, cytochrome oxidase, succinic dehydrogenase, aconitase, uh, xanthine oxidase, and myoglobin. All these, some of these proteins and enzymes are grossly affected during iron deficiency anemia. Even some enzymes that do not even, research has shown that even some enzymes that don't even contain iron is also affected in iron deficiency anemia. And also there's the presence of rich nails, angular stomatitis, especially in those with body, in those that is with badly, you know, fitting the natures. You have glossitis being present and then pharyngeal webs. Example in Parkinson Kelly's uh, syndrome being present in the tissue of individuals with iron deficiency anemia. Studies have also shown that uh, partial villous atrophy with minor degrees of malabsorption of xylose and fat has been described in infants suffering from iron deficiency anemia, but not in adults. Again, the level of some of the proteins that are involved in iron metabolism is upregulated, like cytochrome B, soluble transferrin receptor, a hepstein, cellular plasmin, dimethyl transporter 1, ferroportin. These proteins are upregulated in iron deficiency anemia. In iron deficiency anemia, the um, body immunity is affected. The body immunity is impaired because there is poor lymphocyte transformation, there is diminished cell-mediated immunity, and impaired intracellular cleaning of bacteria by neutrophils. So iron deficiency anemia affects an individual holistically. That is why it's one of the things that we should, as much as possible, try to avoid in infants, pregnant women, because it affects a whole lot of tissues in the system. The enzymes that are involved with so many things in the system is affected, and then the, somebody's immune system is impaired because there is an iron deficiency and the researchers have shown that there is poor lymphocyte transformation, there is diminished cell-mediated immunity, there is impaired intracellular killing of bacteria by uh, neutrophils, that is phagocytosis by neutrophils. Again, Research has also shown that research has also shown that infants with iron deficiency anemia may have impaired mental development and function. Infants with iron deficiency anemia may have impaired mental development and function. And the, the sad thing is that even when, when iron therapy cannot restore the damage that has been done completely, research has shown that even when iron uh, therapy is given, the damage that has been done to these children cannot be restored. So it's, it's, it's better to avoid an infant developing iron, de sustain iron de uh, deficiency anemia because the outcome is, is poor development, mental development is impaired and it may not be reversed with iron therapy. Again, it has also been shown that there is evidence that premature labor is more frequent in mothers with iron deficiency anemia. Premature labor is, 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 is more, more frequent in mothers with iron deficiency anemia. Obviously, the outcome of the pregnancy is affected. It can be, there might be stillbirth, there may be premature labor in severe iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy women. Iron deficiency anemia can also affect, you know, it can decrease, it can cause decrease in work productivity. It can cause decrease in work productivity. It can increase that, you know, increases 
that it leads to increase in, in maternal mortality, increase in maternal mortality, increase in child mortality, and affect the child there development. It affect child there development. Clinical presentation. How does it present clinically? Iron deficiency anemia can cause brittle nails, as shown. Brittle nails, as shown in the in the in, in the slides here. Coelenchia, spoon-shaped nails, as shown in the slide. It can also present as cracks in the size of the mouth and follow cracks in the size of the mouth. Okay. And then extreme fatigue, tiredness, extreme fatigue, tiredness, chest pain, chest pain, frail skin, dizziness, lightheadedness, fast heart rate, headache, an enlarged spleen, cold hands and feet, frequent infections. All these things can be pre clinical presentation of iron deficiency anemia. Irritability, shortness of breath, swelling and sores of the tongue, an unusual craving for non nutritive substances such as eyes, dirt, paint, or starch. And this craving is called pica. Some people who have iron deficiency anemia develop what we call restless leg syndrome. Restless leg syndrome is a disorder that causes a strong urge to move the leg. Some signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia are related to the conditions that caused it, like internal bleeding, you know, in ulcers can be shown in stools as blood in stools or black tally looking there, uh, stools. We have people, women with heavy menstrual bleeding, long periods or other vaginal bleeding may suggest that an individual, if not treated, may be at risk of developing iron deficiency anemia. Now, how do we diagnose iron deficiency anemia in the lab? What do we do in the lab to diagnose iron deficiency? Apart from looking at the clinical aspect, uh, clinical presentation of iron deficiency anemia, there is no need to do some tests to diagnose iron deficiency anemia. So in the laboratory, we look at complete blood count. When we look at the complete blood count, you know that there is increased high rested distribution width. In iron deficiency anemia, there is increased high rested distribution width, reflecting an increase in variability in the size of the red cells. There is obviously low hemoglobin, low, low red blood cell count. The PCB will obviously be low. And then the MCV will be low, the MCH will be low, the MCHC will be low. The hemoglobin and hematocrit is low. That's what reticulocyte count is not um, commensurate with the degree of anemia. So it can be low or moderately elevated, but it is not commensurate with the degree of anemia being presented. When you look at the peripheral blood smear in the lab, Obviously, the cells will be microcytic and hypochromic. That defines iron deficiency anemia. There will be presence of microcytic red cells, hypochromic red cells, target cells, and then hypochromic uh, pencil-shaped cells, and occasionally small number of nucleated uh, red cells. And then there also an increase in platelet count, that is thrombocytosis. Another thing we can do to diagnose, look at iron status of an individual when we are diagnosing iron deficiency anemia is we can estimate serum ferritin level. And serum ferritin level less than 12 uh, microgram per nanogram per mil is, is, uh, defines the iron deficiency. And then transferring saturation less than 15% defines the iron deficiency. Total iron binding capacity is greater than 30 350 microgram per dm defines the iron deficiency anemia. The serum iron levels decreases in iron deficiency anemia. Obviously, serum iron level decreases less than 120 microgram in male and then 100 microgram in women. Then there is increased free erythrocyte protoporphyrin ring. When you do estimation of 
throat of buffering, it is increased. And then increased soluble transferrin receptor is increased. And then serum uh, transferrin is elevated in iron deficiency anemia. Then gold standard, the, the, the diagnosis, uh, laboratory diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. You can also do uh, bone marrow aspiration. It's called gold standard, but most times it is not used routinely because it is invasive. It's only in extreme cases that we go to demonstrate iron in the bone marrow. With the bone marrow stand for iron, 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 bone marrow is hypercellular and the erythral hyperplasia and also leukocyte and leukocyte are normal. And then the thing here is that when it is then in frank iron deficiency anemia, remember the bone marrow microphages do not have iron. Therefore, no stainable iron in the marrow reticulum cells. If there's, when you do patient bone stain, there is no stainable iron in the marrow reticulum cells. And this confirms iron deficiency anemia. Remember we said, you can actually diagnose iron deficiency anemia. Looking at other tests that we have mentioned, peripheral blood film, doing your PCV, hematocrit, looking at your peripheral blood film, seeing microcytic hypochromic cells, matching it with your MCV, MCH, MCHC, and also red cell distribution with, can actually give you a good diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. Gold standard, the bone marrow aspiration, drug gold standard is not routinely done because it's invasive and it's only done in extreme cases when the gain at where's the risk that is there involved, okay? Prevention of iron deficiency anemia. How can we, can we prevent iron deficiency anemia? One, we can do that by dietary modification. First of all, eating balanced diet. Diet that are rich in iron can help to reduce iron deficiency anemia. Then dietary modification like breastfeeding and appropriate weaning of the child can help the child not to develop iron deficiency anemia. Iron rich food, increase ascorbic acid and decrease taking inhibitors. Those that, those that stabilize iron three shouldn't be in our food, but those that stabilize iron two should be incorporated in our meal. By reducing agents like ascorbic acid is also good in enhancing iron absorption. Why calcium retards iron absorption? So iron supplements should not be taken together with calcium supplements. You can take your iron supplement in the morning, but calcium in the evening. But when you take the two together, the calcium tablet interferes with iron absorption and it can stop you from getting the, the much iron that you deserve from your iron supplement. Then another thing is food fortification and then iron supplementation when prescribed. Management of iron deficiency anemia. One is identification and treatment of underlying cause. Remember, iron deficiency anemia, uh, most times do not occur on its own. There's something that is actually causing it. Maybe infection, maybe uh, blood loss that's bleeding somewhere, maybe disease underlying ailment. So there is need to identify and treat the underlying cause. And then you can now tackle the iron deficiency anemia. Again, iron deficiency is commonly you know, due to blood loss. And wherever possible, it is there is need to identify the site of this loss and then they identify and the lesion treated to stop the loss of blood. If it is due to ulcer, the ulcer should be treated. If it is due to menorrhagia, that should be treated. If it is due to hemorrhoid, it should be treated before you can actually tackle the iron deficiency anemia proper. Also, there should also be correction of the deficiency by therapy with inorganic iron, like iron supplementation. It can be oral therapy, it can be parenteral iron therapy, depending on what the patient needs. Oral therapy is mostly used, but in extreme cases, you can have parenteral therapy being prescribed by their doctor because of what uh, the peculiar situation that the patient is in. Another thing that can be done Depending on the severity of anemia that has developed, you can have instant iron blood, um, instant blood transfusion to alleviate the anemia while treating the iron deficiency. You can have blood transfusion to alleviate the anemia while treating the 
iron deficiency because iron therapy takes time for it to, to manifest in the peripheral blood. So, but if the level of anemia is very severe, blood transfusion can be given while the ion therapy is uh, continued. While the ion therapy is continued. Thank you very much. I hope you have learned one or two things from today's lecture. We've talked about iron deficiency anemia, the cause of iron deficiency anemia, the, the, the clinical presentation of iron deficiency anemia, the sequence of events that leads to iron deficiency anemia, remember the depleted iron stores, iron deficient erythropoiesis, and the frank iron deficiency anemia, and then how we can diagnose iron deficiency anemia in the lab, and then the management of iron deficiency anemia, you know, identifying the underlying cause, stopping it, where the form of blood loss should be tackled, and then you can have iron therapy, that aura of parenteral therapy, and then in severe cases, blood transfusion can be used to alleviate the anemia. And again, why, how do we stop it? How do we stop iron deficiency anemia? Remember, eating iron-rich food is very important. Then fortification of food, breastfeeding of infants, and then iron supplementation when it is prescribed, especially for pregnant women, is necessary for you to stick to that. And again, it's good to, you know, not to eat your meal with those things that inhibit iron absorption. Remember, ascorbic acid vitamin C increases iron absorption. Things like calcium phytate reduces iron absorption. Thank you very much for being part of this lecture. I know you have learned one or two things. These are our references. For further reading, you can look at uh, one or two or three of these things that have been written here. Thank you very much. I expect to get feedback from you. I expect to get feedback from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.